Hey guys, Stanford here with the Fun Robotics Network, and right now I'm hanging out with Team 5419 Berkelium, and we're gonna go into some of the super slick stuff they got on this robot. They got omnidirectional intakes, they can pick up notes from all four sides of their robot. Their shooter mechanism, their elevator, their trap, the software that powers all of it. And I've got Grayson, Samishka, Zale, and Carolyn here to help me out with that, so stay tuned for all that more in an episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you, and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, Carolyn, take it away. Yeah, on the shooter, so we have these two poly belts which index the note up into these uh, flywheels. Uh, I mean, system is pretty basic. We found that uh, over the top would fit best for our geometrical needs. Um, we really wanted to focus on getting like a consistent note intake to keep the shot really consistent. So one thing we did for that was this is less than uh, the note radius. So that way the note gets compressed between the two walls as it moves through the, sh through the shooter. Um, we also have this uh, PTFE, it's like super slippery, slick stuff on the side of the shooter so we can get a consistent uh, slick shot through without any drag. Um, we do not have any spin. Um, as noticed, uh, instead we decided to make these spin very fast. So we have these geared uh, 34 to 18. Um, so we get a really fast flywheel shot, which gets us a straight shot, um, despite the fact that we don't have any spin. Um, down here we have some like indexing rollers. They help a lot for our trap shot. Um, we originally did not have uh, some one of these rollers here, but we had a really difficult time getting it into the trap. It would get stuck, so we added it in. In addition, we have these little free spinning wheels right here to help with trapping. As our robot moves um, up in our climb, they drag along the stage, um, so we have a smooth uh, come up. And so how do you guys approach prototyping a subsystem like this? Like, what are the manufacturing methods you guys kind of use for that? Um, so our first step is pretty similar to other teams, drills and some wheels. But um, after that, we have some really nice laser cutters from our school that we can use to cut wooden oh, yeah. plates pretty quickly. So we just have our design people like churn out some different versions and we're able to assemble those as quickly as possible. And uh, from there we move on to real materials which are happy with what we have in the like wood process. All right, awesome stuff. Let's go ahead and talk about the uh, elevator on this thing. For sure. All right, if you want to do it in the trap position so we can talk a little bit more about it. So, it's a pretty simple stage elevator. It's just one chain driven by two sprockets, one right there, right there. It's by two Krakens, which are on a 12 to one ratio. And it pretty much, it's mainly only used for the trap at its full extension, but we also do use it a little bit for amp. We go up a little bit so we can get like a better angle down. Uh, it's mostly lightened eighth inch wall tube on both of these ones. And as you can see here, this is our pivot mechanism. So it's driven by a single Kraken on a very small ratio here. We have a small, um, I think it's a 10 tooth pinion, and then we have an 80 tooth gear. So it's a pretty large ratio, and that's actually an intermediate stage in the middle right there. That goes up to these huge 108 tooth pulleys, and these things drive the pivot. So this pivot is driven through a dead axle, which goes straight along the center of the center stage right there. And it's braced around the back with this nice chunky brace. Um, originally, we actually prototyped them separately. So we prototyped the elevator and we prototyped a separate mechanism with a pivot. And then we kind of meshed the two over time as we figured out what would work. And this also helps with our climb. As you can see right here, these are the hooks. So these are the first things that hit when we go up to the chain. And we actually, we added these things right here. These are magnets because it used to come in and kind of bounce and it would take a while for us to get in the right position to do the climb. So with the magnets, it just comes in straight and just clicks into place. And that way we can just straight pull down. And these right here, these hooks are what actually goes past, past the chain. So this will come down, it'll pull the chain past these and they'll click into place like that. And then the elevator goes back down. So the elevator goes down, these click over, and when it goes back up, now it's on these set of hooks instead of these set of hooks. And that gives us our height. So that makes 
the drive base the closest it can possibly be to the chain and therefore maximizing the height at which we can shoot down into the trap. And so that's straight from our shooter out the back of the wheels into the trap. And um, what, what material do you guys make these pulleys out of? Because there's quite a few custom pulleys. That seems so the, these large ones are pretty standard PLA. They're 3D printed. We've 3D printed along the long axis to give ourselves the most strength possible. And the insides are these CNC'd aluminum plates. They're inserts, like they're kind of inset into there. And so that helps give us rigidity in the system. The center one right here is carbon fiber to help with the torque. Because it's a pretty small pulley on this ratio, turning this whole arm. And this arm is pretty heavy. So we have a carbon fiber pulley right there to make sure and that's bolted through to this gear. That gives us like kind of no worry that it's gonna like, you know, shear. Um, but these ones are just basic PLA because the radius is so big that we're not really worried about shearing for us. And we have not experienced problems with that. All right. And then let's uh, go ahead and get this robot on the ground and talk about this intake. So for the intake, we decided we wanted to have the capability to intake from all four sides. So the first step was to get an intake that can um, intake from both sides um, of the thing. So over we we have two rollers that help it go into it. And then no goes through here and up. And we have these bigger rollers. One thing we wanted to do was keep it between the swerves and our biggest issue was making sure that there was enough surface area for the note to go on. So we customized some 3D prints so that there would be maximum roller space so that it could flow in smoothly without getting stuck on the pulleys. And then we, for the four-sided intake, we decided to take inspiration from a Roomba and we wanted to have these wheels on all four sides that would help bring in the notes. And they are connected by polycord and the polycord helps revert them so they spin opposite directions, pulling them in. And then when they get in, they bounce around and then they go into the intake feeding it into the shoe. Um, so did you guys ever encounter any uh, like initial problems with testing that, that required a lot of fixing? Yeah, uh, some of our biggest issue was um, the intake was too low to the ground, so figuring out what was the good height so that the gears wouldn't pick up too much dirt in these, in these gears um, was one of our biggest issues. Plus, this is also our first time using polycord on our robot, so we struggled with figuring out how to make it work. But in the end, it worked out pretty well. All right, let's go ahead and go through the uh, software and controls that are powering this thing. Yeah, so this year we decided to spend a lot of time in software. Um, our robot, we got a couple, um, it's the most complex robot for Kelly is built. And part of that is um, a lot of our subsystems are dependent on each other. Um, so our intake is dependent on our arm and elevator in a certain state. And um, because of that, we decided to run three state machines for our software this year. We have one state machine that controls the intake chain, one state machine that controls the arm and elevator kinematic chain, and then the last state machine that's kind of like a big overseer. It's the boss of both of them and makes sure everything's staying in you know, check and we're all running smooth. Um, and part of that state machine move was we have a lot of automation in our robot. Um, I think the highlight of that is that we have a full um, shoot on the move. So with one button on the driver controller, the robot aims and um, moves the arm and elevator to the right position, the flywheel to the right speed, and shoots automatically when it deems fit. And kind of building off that, we also have this really cool intake mode, where, or sorry, cleanup mode, where um, the robot auto cycles between intake and shooting um, basically as fast as possible to clean up as many notes as we can. And we average a very, very low cycle time uh, when we're in that mode. Um, lastly, we have a large set of V brakes throughout our entire intake. That allows us to track our note position, allows us to make sure our notes are going where we hope they're going. Um, and, you know, that's part of that intake state machine. Um, we run uh, vision and odometry, standard, um, uh, standard Falcon odometry, 240 hertz. Comes with the um, CTRE swerve that's built into Phoenix Tuner. Um, and on top of that, we have two cameras. We only ran one during the on season, but during the off season, we have two. They're both tracking April tags. Um, they're both black and white, um, just normal standard cameras. That's one of them, it's mounted on our swerve module, so we know precisely where it is in CAD. We have another one mounted to the back of our elevator. That's our shooting camera. It looks for targets um, on the speaker. All right, let's go and go see this uh, robot's note journey, see how these notes uh, move through the robot. Oh, sorry, intake through the front. It goes through the normal two-way rollers. All right, and then we're gonna do an intake from the side. This one kind of bounces around underneath the robot until it heads up into the rollers. 
Now we're gonna go to amp for this one. Since it's our amp set point, I'm gonna kinda just spit it into the amp after. All right, so as you can see, this robot's really pretty cool. These guys have been killing it here at Chessy Champs. So make sure to check out Berkelium, both their matches at Chessy Champs and in the future. So thank you guys so much for allowing us to come by and look at your robot. And uh, good luck with the rest of your competition. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.